Another treatment um, that's available is uh, something called buprenorphine, okay? Buprenorphine, which is the brand name of it, is Suboxone, right. um, w w which it sounds like you've had some experience. So, so when you took Suboxone, what happened? So I must have took it like about, it was one day, I had no money, I wasn't gonna be able to get money for her the, till the next day, and I wanted to make sure I'd be okay, um, so I wouldn't get sick. Um, so I took a, it was a strip, I don't. Yeah, um, it's like almost like one of those Listerine strips. Yeah, it was gross. Um, and maybe about 25 minutes after, it was, I think that my last use was probably four hours before. Okay. Um, I got a little bit sick. Right. Um, so I've been. You've been I, scared of taking yeah, it since then. Yeah, yeah. Right, so that's, um, uh, what happened to you is something, uh, there's like a technical aspect of using buprenorphine, which, um, buprenorphine binds to the opioid receptor very, very tightly. So it's kind of like a key that is bent a little bit, and when you put it in the lock, it doesn't come out. Um, and so it's when, when you ingest buprenorphine, it attaches to the receptors and uh, what we say, it outcompetes any other opioids. So what happens is, is that Buprenorphine is what's called a partial agonist, meaning it doesn't activate the receptors as strongly as heroin or as methadone. There's like a, um, a ceiling effect. And what that means is no matter how much you take of it, you can only provide so much opioid stimulation. And if you have ingested, if you used heroin um, and you take buprenorphine, what happens is, is that the system gets dropped down to the level that's a maximum for the buprenorphine. So it's almost like you were driving 100 miles an hour, but the car really can only go 50, and it's like slamming on the brakes. And so what happens is, is that uh, if you have recently used um, oxycodone or heroin or methadone and take buprenorphine, you will shock your system into uh, withdrawal, what's called precipitated withdrawal, and um, be sick for a little while. You won't stay sick forever. I mean, it'll last maybe eight or 10 hours and then you'll feel okay. Um, so when, when, when people are treated with buprenorphine, at the beginning, the first couple of doses, uh, it's necessary to wait for the person to be at least in some withdrawal. So what we have people do is we have them take their last dose of heroin or oxycodone, um, and usually like about 12 to 16 hours after their last use, um, they'll start having, like what are some symptoms that you have when you start to feel sick? Um, I get sweaty, I, I can't sleep, um, stomach is kind of unsettled, um, I feel nauseous, I don't throw up, but I feel nauseous. Okay, so if you start to have those feelings, like you don't have to be in full blown withdrawal, like you know, on the floor of the bathroom vomiting, it, 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 you just need to start to have like the kind of anxious, edgy, feelings like the sweaty feeling that is like the beginning of the withdrawal period and if you start to have that then it's usually safe to take buprenorphine we you know we, and do you remember if you took a two or an eight milligram strip do you remember i just remember it was orange yeah so I, you know the other thing that we do when we give people buprenorphine is we give them a little dose at the first to kind of get them used to it because you could take a bigger dose and like that'll make the precipitate withdrawal worse so okay. So what we, what we wanna do is when, when we're giving the initial doses of buprenorphine, so few people are comfortable, the idea is that you go into a little bit of withdrawal, not full-blown withdrawal, but a little bit of withdrawal, and then we gradually give you a little bit of buprenorphine, and then rather than feeling worse, you'll feel better. So I think the experience that you had with buprenorphine is makes sense to me based on what happened, but it's not the way um, it's supposed to go if, if you're getting like the right advice on, on it on wouldn't make me sick if I it wouldn't I, I don't think it I mean you might feel people the first day that the first day or two that they're on buprenorphine sometimes feel a little weird they feel a little different because it's a different drug buprenorphine is actually pretty strong it's, it's actually very powerful and it's a different drug ultimately than than heroin or oxycodone it, it really it, it feels different to people so the first day or two can can feel a little different but it's not, you shouldn't feel sick, you shouldn't be in withdrawal. Does it make you feel high or? You know, if somebody without uh, a, a tolerance or was not used to taking opioids, um, if your roommate took it, um, she would become intoxicated from it. So, um, but for people who 
you know, again, like going back to this idea of like the full and partial agonist, it, it's, you know, heroin, oxycodone are like Ferraris. Like the more you step on the gas, the faster you go, okay? Um, uh, buprenorphine, uh, you're, you're too young to, to know like a, um, like a Ford Pinto, um, but uh, is like a, a, a car that can't go fast enough. Like if at 50 miles an hour it starts to shake, it doesn't go any fast. So buprenorphine is something that um, if you don't have a tolerance for opioids and you took it, you would feel something. It was used for, for pain for a long time before it started to um, uh, be used for opioid treatment. And uh, so it has some effects, it has some opioid effects, but they're not very powerful. Um, the main properties, and, and I like to talk to patients about this because I think you'll feel the, you, you, you felt the difference and feel the difference. The main properties about buprenorphine that make it an interesting treatment is that it, it, there's this, if you take more of it at a certain point, you don't get any more effect, okay? So that's why it was um, selected as a medicine to be available by prescription. It's not like methadone. Methadone um, is not a hard drug to overdose and die on um, for non-tolerant individuals. Buprenorphine is much safer, and that's why it's not subject to the same regulations as methadone is. Um, it, it's still a controlled substance. You still shouldn't give it to people who um, you know, are not prescribed it. Um, but in general, um, because of the ceiling effect, uh, it, it's easier to use in the community um, in, in a less su in less supervised way. Um, the other thing about it is this: the, the tightness that it attack attaches to the receptor. It lasts a really long time, and so the advantage of that is because it it, it gets on the receptor and is stuck there, is that you don't have this kind of up and down feeling that you get from using oxycodone or heroin. And I think for for people who have been using opiates for as long as you, I'm sure there's a rhythm to your day where you use, you feel better, maybe a little high, and then to feel less well, and then maybe sick and get anxious and have to use again. And there's kind of this constantly changing um, set of feelings that have to do with the blood level rising and falling of the opiates you're taking. I don't know if that's... No, I mean, it's like I take, I use a bag or two every like four to six hours, it feels like. Mm -hmm.